Okay, welcome back. So in this segment, we're going to look at how to use the fast Fourier transform uh, for audio signals. So we're just going to kind of play around with um, some MATLAB audio signal um, techniques. We're going to load in an MP3. We're going to play that MP3. We're going to look at um, spectrograms and things like that. So we're just going to kind of play around a little bit. So the first thing I want to do is um, we're going to clear all, close all, CLC, and I'm going to generate a, what's called a chirp signal. So I'm going to create a small delta t. t equals 0 in increments of delta t up to 2. We're going to say x equals chirp t 100, 1, 200, q. Um, that's a quadratic chirp. Let's see if I can even run this. Good. OK. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, play the sound of this chirp. So sound x comma 1 over dt. So sound is a really cool built-in MATLAB function. It allows you to play the sound uh, given by this vector x at a frame rate or at a sample rate given by 1 over delta t. That's how many, um, like that's the sampling rate. So let's just run this. OK, I don't know if you can hear that. I'll come closer to the mic. So it starts low frequency, and it increases. OK? Um, now let's try to do a plot. So we're going to plot t by x, our time versus x. Um, draw now, and I'm just going to do x label time, and y label is sound. Let's run this. OK, and we see it's a little hard to see, actually, but um, let's just see if I can uh, make this a little bit bigger. So we start out with a relatively low frequency sound, and then it gets higher and higher and higher and higher frequency uh, as time goes on. Okay, So we could do something like uh, take the FFT, <coughs> excuse me, we could say y equals FFT of x uh, comma n, where n is the length of t. And we could plot the power spectrum. We could plot y dot times the conjugate of y. Uh, let's just see what that looks like. Make a new figure. OK. And we see um, we're only supposed to look at the first half of this from 0 up to 1,000. But we see that there's this really interesting profile of power in different frequencies. So it starts here, and it goes up uh, you know, some power in high frequencies, but a lot of power in these low frequencies. OK, okay so you can just kind of load. You can create your own sound files. You can listen to them, you can plot them with your, you know, your speaker. You can also plot them, look at the power spectral density. You can do all of the things we're used to doing. Um, and the FFT can use, you can use to denoise and do things like that. There's some other neat examples. So um, there's a cool command called mp3 read that you can download. So I'm just going to um, show you the URL here. You can download this from MathWorks uh, MATLAB Central File Exchange. And um, due to copyright infringement, I can't actually upload the audio file that I'm about to play. But you can put in your own favorite audio file. OK, so I'm going to use this mp3 read command to load my Led Zeppelin song. This is the first few seconds of a really good Led Zeppelin song. And that data is going to be stored in this y vector. It's also going to give me the frame rate. OK, so most audio signals are encoded at something like 44 kilohertz. And that's going to be this number fs. It should be something like 44,000 or 41.1 thousand. OK, this is an, we're going to play the first five seconds of this audio signal. So the length is going to be 1 uh, up to 5 seconds times that frame rate. That's how many frames I'm going to have. And I'm just going to plot the first few seconds. So first, I'm going to run this. Let's hope this all runs correctly. OK, it gives me a warning. And this is actually what the sound looks like for this first five seconds of this Led Zeppelin song that I'm going to play for you. It's kind of you know, much more interesting and rich than that chirp signal. 
And you can also use this sound command. So we're going to say we're going to keep turn the sound on. So again, we're going to give sound uh, our Y signal and our frame rate. And let's just look at what the size, let's just look at what um, FS is. OK, good. So this was sampled from a CD, and so it's a 44.1 kilohertz sampled audio. I'm going to run this one more time. And I'm going to say draw now. So it draws before it plays the sound. OK. OK, cool. So this is the first five seconds of a Led Zeppelin song. And we can, um, we can listen to the sound. We could look at the FFT. We can do all of these things. Um, now, there is a built-in MATLAB command called spectrogram. And you should have this on the student version. Um, unfortunately, I don't have access to the license server right now. So I can't run this on my computer, or else it'll tell me I need a new toolbox. But you can take this exact same code, and you can run it on your computer for, um, for your particular MP3 that you want to listen to. And you can look at what's called the spectrogram. So the spectrogram is this really, really, really cool way of visualizing music, where you have essentially the y-axis is kind of like your power spectrum. It tells you how much power is in different frequency bands. And the x-axis is time. So I'm going to show you an example of this on YouTube. It's a really cool example uh, for Beethoven. OK, so this is going to be the spectrogram of a Beethoven song. And I'm just going to play this for you and walk you through this. So you see the power spectrum on the y-axis. That's a chord being played. And you can see all of the, the chord and the harmonics have power in them. Everything else is black, no power. And this is a beautiful way of visualizing kind of the progression of the music. As time goes on, you can see, um, you can see the different components that are on at that instant in time in the audio. So this is like a windowed Fourier transform. And we're looking at the windowed power spectral density as time evolves. So I'll just step out and kind of let you enjoy this for a minute. So the spectrogram is a very, very cool tool for visualizing audio signals and really any kind of a signal. Um, and in advanced data analysis, the spectrogram can actually be really useful. So for example, if I want to tell the difference between um, rock and classical and jazz and country and rap, and I want to tell the difference between all of these different genres of music, what I can do is I can, tr I can collect a bunch of examples of each type of music and look at their spectrograms. And I can look for dominant features in this spectrogram pattern. So for example, classical music might have a very broad range, rich range of frequencies that are being excited. Whereas maybe jazz has a band of low frequency where the bass lives and a you know, piano band. And um, you know, rock music might have a different band of frequencies that are excited in its spectrogram. And so you could actually use features of the spectrogram. You could use features of the spectrogram to uh, train your computer to tell the difference between you know, rock music and jazz and classical music uh, just by extracting features through the spectrogram. So it's a really, really powerful tool for data analysis. Um, it's a little bit advanced, but I encourage you to play around with it and try it out on your computer. And just YouTube, you know, spectrogram, and then pick some, some artists, and it's pretty cool. Okay, thank you.